Welcome to a TV20 news break. I'm Dan Monroe. The City of Cleveland has a new Assistant Director for the Department of Community Development. At a ceremony in the Red Room of Cleveland City Hall, Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb administered the oath of office to Tony Scott in front of his family and colleagues. And then I will faithfully, and I will faithfully, honestly, honestly, and impartially, and impartially discharge the duties, discharge the duties of assistant director, of assistant director, Department of Community Development, Department of Community Development to the City of Cleveland, to the City of Cleveland, State of Ohio, State of Ohio, during my continuance in said office. During my continuance in said office. Congratulations, sir. I appreciate it. Afterwards, Assistant Director Scott offered his thanks and then summed up the work the department does in one word. Thank you to obviously my wife Carmen, thank you to my director, my assistant director, co-assistant director, and thank you to the team, those that are present and are not. I'm excited for the work that we do. I had a chance to uh, sit with Trudy yesterday and she was talking about some of the work she does. I said, the work that we do is sexy. <laughs> it's really that simple. The change that we can make in citizens, communities, and the development world, I mean, it's sexy, so I'm excited to be here. So. Excited to have you, my friend. Thank you. Congratulations again. Everyone in here at TV20 would like to congratulate Tony Scott on his new role and wish him the best of luck. Well, after what seemed like an eternity of waiting, the RTA waterfront line has finally reopened. With the cutting of the ribbon, RTA riders now have closer access to Cleveland's North Coast Harbor, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Greater Cleveland Science Center, and most importantly, Cleveland Brown Stadium. Cleveland's Chief Operating Officer Bonnie Tewin says this project makes Cleveland even more accessible. Uh, this project aligns with the mayor's vision towards a 15-minute city that makes Cleveland a great place to live, work, and play. This link is important to the development of the North Coast it's part of a multimodal plan that allows accessibility to the lake and to the core of downtown. It will support economic development and improve the quality of life for all income levels. Cleveland City Council President Blaine Griffin says the opening of the waterfront line also strengthens the downtown neighborhood. Downtown is a neighborhood. It's a vibrant neighborhood, a thriving neighborhood, and we're just happy that this addition not only focuses on strengthening the downtown, but connects all of our residents to the downtown central business district. So thank you so much on behalf of all the Cleveland City Council. With the opening of the new waterfront line, it's time to get riding and explore your city. Latin for Swift Cure, Velosano Bike to Cure is an annual cancer research fundraiser put on by the Cleveland Clinic, and TV20's Alex Picturna was there for the opening celebration and kickoff event. Celebrating its 10 year anniversary with more than $37 million raised, this year's Velisano bike ride kicked off on the downtown Mall B to welcome riders, volunteers, and sponsors together to celebrate. This is our six year of riding, and uh, I'm both a cancer survivor and a physician who works at Cleveland Clinic. And so this is really important. We ride for our friends, we ride for those that we love who've lost their lives of cancer or are battling it right now. And every day as I go to work and I run into people that are fighting this disease, can't help but say we need to do more to help them. So it's really a privilege to ride and be out here doing this. Many of the riders are from the group Living Hope, a support organization for those who have or are battling cancer. Nicole Peters, executive director for Velisano, shared that although the event culminates in a bike ride, there are plenty of opportunities to help for those who are unable to join. So you don't need to be an avid cyclist to get involved with this. It's a ride, not a race. Most of our people that out are out riding aren't, they, this is the only bike ride they do throughout the whole year. And they're really doing it because they want to make a difference in the fight against cancer. And this is giving them the vehicle to make that difference. So some people live, a lot of Living Hope survivors that are riding. So Living Hope is our, our community of survivors and current patients. So they're out there riding. They also volunteer a lot if they're not physically able to ride just yet. Some people are never gonna ride a bike. You know, they don't maybe want to put together their own fundraiser, but they can still donate and be a part of this community because it's all of those donations adding up that makes that 4.5 million 
that 37 million possible. Starting with nearly 800 people in its first ride, this year's Velocino was home to more than 2,600 riders, all with their own story and reason for joining the event. I think everyone should participate in this thing if you have, a, like, a, if you are interested in biking, and if you're not even interested, then you can have like a call virtual fundraiser. You can have those fundraising things in the Facebook, in any other social media platform, so that uh, others can donate, and, and also you can donate too, and you can have have some impact on the cancer in the future or currently. It's uh, supporting uh, the research for the cancer and also supporting people who ever have or suffer from that. I mean, this is huge, um, such a great event, raising money for such a good cause. Um, as I said last night, so many people are, everybody's been touched by cancer in some way, shape or form and um, I lost my grandma to it. and. Um, so I ride for her. Her name is Lois. For TV20, this is Alex Picturna. Thanks, Alex. To learn more or to sign up for next year's ride, you can visit velisano.org. Founded in 1998, the Judge A. Larry Jones Drug Court gives those convicted of drug-related crimes an opportunity to negate time in prison and turn their lives around. Now, 25 years later, the drug court has seen nearly 2,000 graduates and a special award ceremony was held for those who make the drug court's success possible. We are celebrating 25 years of bringing people from a, a, a state of addiction to recovery. As you know, drug addiction is a scourge in our community and a lot of people have it and it goes untreated just like mental illness. And so we are here along with other specialized doctors to treat that so that we can present, prevent uh, drug addiction, we can, we can nip it in the bud, we can get people on the road to recovery and we can reduce recidivism. So it's all very important and it makes our community healthier and stronger. And we are just celebrating all the the, the team members who took part, took part in it and all the participants who have been, been able to give a victory story because of their participation in the drug court. Among the award recipients included everyone from local judges who continue to advocate for the benefits of the Larry A. Jones Drug Court, to Cleveland City Council members, to the individual counselors who make the entire program possible. Restaurant Week has come to a close here in Cleveland, but we here at TV20 took this opportunity to spotlight a few of the best places in town to grab a good meal. First up, one local eatery that is making waves with its mouth-watering American cuisine. Well, Betts is part of the, we're at Betts, part of the uh, Showfield building, the Kempton Showfield Hotel. Um, we've been in existence now about six years, and Betts is named after Mr. Levi Schofield's wife, Betts, one of the patri matriarchs of the, of the Schofield family. And we're proud to be part of Restaurant Week. Betts Restaurant Week menu is displaying the diverse flavors of American cuisine. We offer a diverse menu. We try to offer a very healthy menu as well, with both vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free options, and some great cocktails. So you can get, not to mention if you want to get a steak, we've got that available too. So a bit of everything. With Betts being centrally located in downtown Cleveland, patrons from all over visited Betts to get a taste of what they have to offer. I think Restaurant Week is a great way to both promote the restaurants in downtown Cleveland, within the city, with people from the community, and also for people from out of town. Restaurant Week, uh, we have people in from all over. I've met people from New York, Chicago, um, St. Louis, Missouri, Florida, just in the past few days. And they've enjoyed Restaurant Week. And we're happy to be part of it. With a commitment to outstanding American cuisine and a welcoming atmosphere, Bet's Restaurant was certainly a standout during this year's Restaurant Week. Next up, House of Creole, a charming Cajun restaurant that's been serving up a taste of Louisiana right here in Cleveland. The House of Creole, we opened up about a year and a half ago by owner uh, Jeffrey Muscari. He owns several restaurants in Washington, D.C., and this is actually the first restaurant he's branched out of that area, so I'm excited to be a part of it. I would say the atmosphere and ambiance here um, is really caters to anybody and everybody that wants to come in and enjoy a good meal, good music. And we play a lot of jazz, New Orleans style theme music. Uh, we have live entertainment. 
um, some weekends, and yeah, it's a good vibe all the way around. As soon as you step through the doors of House of Creole, you're transported to the heart of the bayou. The walls are adorned with Mardi Gras masks and vibrant paintings of New Orleans, and the scent of rich spices fills the air. I think we've set ourselves apart by just having a different style menu than, you know, that you can get anywhere around here. Not a lot of places you can go and be like, I can get jambalaya or I can get a seafood etouffee or shrimp and grits. So, um, but we also have, you know, normal things. We have a, a smash burger, you know, we've got a, our hot honey chicken sandwich. I feel like we have a little bit of everything that can to cater to everybody's wants. The goal at House of Creole is to bring the flavors of Louisiana to the people of Cleveland. Chef Stewart prepared two special dishes for our cameras. Our must tries for restaurant week would be our lamb chops and our gumbo. Those are two of our best selling and most popular dishes. And it's kind of things that you can't really get anywhere else around here. Our lamb chops paired with our Cajun fried rice and asparagus. And then also our loaded gumbo, which is uh, shrimp, slow cooked chicken and andouille sausage with lots of flavor. House of Creole is a true hidden gem located in a busy area of downtown Cleveland. We're right by uh, the Guardian Stadium, so we do get a lot of business before and after the game. You know, brown season just started, so uh, we are open for brunch on Sundays. So, you know, we, we do get some Browns crowd. Uh, you know, the theaters, there's so many things to do downtown. Tower City is right down the street. So, you know, as you're enjoying your day in downtown, definitely stop in and see us. Our website is houseofcreolecle.com and our Instagram page is House of Creole. If you're looking to spice up your taste buds, be sure to visit House of Creole restaurant and savor the flavors of Louisiana right here in our city. City leaders, sports professionals, and historians join together to reflect upon the historic Ali Summit and the city of Cleveland's involvement in civil rights. Here's TV20's Alex McTurna with the story. The Ali Summit was a meeting of famed boxer Muhammad Ali, several Cleveland Browns players, and then attorney Carl Stokes to protest Ali's involvement in the Vietnam War in 1967. Since then, a legacy of athlete-led activism has followed, something that was celebrated and discussed with a panel hosted by Cleveland Mayor Justin Bibb, featuring current and former Browns players and historian Branson Wright. Paint the picture for us of that day. What was going through, on in your mind? Give us the, the feeling, the context of, of the beginning of that day of the Ali Summit. We said, we'll support you. We'll stand with you. They had already taken away his championship and his passport. And there's no question in my mind and everybody else's mind, they were intend to put him in jail as a draft dodger at that time. After the panel, the crowd was taken outside for the unveiling of the latest plaque along the Cleveland Civil Rights Trail, celebrating the LE Summit. In the city of Cleveland, we do things right. We're history, history makers. And I have to say, where you used to go back in the day and everybody had a picture in their house of JFK and other luminaries, I can tell you in every black barber shop, in every home, African-American home across our community, you see this picture of the summit taking place in the city of Cleveland across our country. I don't care where you go. So to be able to celebrate this moment and the impact that it had on our community means so much and means volumes. For TV20, this is Alex Picturna. Thanks, Alex. You can find the full panel discussion and unveiling ceremony on our YouTube page at TV20 Cleveland. Cleveland Public Theater was transformed into a maze of theater, dance, visual art, and performance at its annual benefit and theatrical spectacular, Pandemonium 2023, Into the Depths. Now in its 21st year, Pandemonium is always the event to see and be seen. This all-inclusive experience features artistic expression, fabulous food from local chefs, free drinks, and free valet parking. For it. Cleveland Public Theater, it is like our main fundraiser that we do every year. It is essential for helping us to basically raise funding for our education programs as well as so that we can 
have like life-changing um, productions and groundbreaking productions. That's essentially why we do it. This entire team at Cleveland Public Theater coming together, and not just us, but students from Cleveland State University who've been working on our staff this summer to help make this happen, uh, members of Whitehaven, uh, it's a treatment center, uh, that we work with every year to make an original play. Some of their clients are here working on this event as well. So it really has taken a whole village to make this happen. After one year off during the pandemic and smaller crowds during the following years, Pandemonium is back at full strength. It means so much given everything we've seen happen in our country and in our city over the last several years with the pandemic and now to be back outside celebrating diversity, celebrating our great culture. It means the world to me as mayor and I know it means the world to everybody here this evening as well too. Pandemonium proceeds benefit CPT's groundbreaking artistic work and life-changing education programs. A lot of people don't understand the programming that they do for students, for young people, for people that's coming back into the community and recovering. Their programs are phenomenal. And so to be able to be here tonight, everybody who support this, the people that's being honored, they're being honored because they do things in a community that helps support Clevelanders and Northeast Ohioans. And so that's why it's important. Cleveland Public Theater recognized Nick Barlage as their 2003 Pan Award recipient for his exceptional service to community. Nick is the CEO of Rock Entertainment Group and a champion of the arts, education, diversity, equity, and inclusion of the greater Cleveland community. The most important thing for us is to come be here. You know, theater is nothing without the audience. The audience is our final collaborator. And the cool thing at Cleveland Public Theater, we used to have something called pay what you can, and a few tickets were available for pay what you can. Now every ticket, choose what you pay from a dollar to $35. You choose, you come, see the work, be with us, uh, be inspired by the artists of our community. Pandemonium is always a wonderful event to experience Cleveland's extremely diverse art scene. Entrepreneurs Organization, or EO for short, is a network of more than 18,000 business owners across 75 plus countries who collaborate together on problem solving and recently a brand new space for local business owners to learn and collaborate with one another opened here in Cleveland with Mayor Justin Bibb joining for the ribbon cutting ceremony. Here's TV20's Alex McTurna with more. Since we took office, we've been on this bold, urgent, ambitious journey to really not just restore Cleveland's greatness that we saw at the height of the Industrial Revolution, but to really remake our city for uh, the next generation. Many people don't realize that this was the place. This was the place where uh, John D. Rockefeller got his start. We led uh, the first Industrial Revolution of, of this great country. And because of people like you, I think we have the ability and the can-do spirit to do it uh, once again. After the ribbon cutting, I spoke with regional chair for EO, Anthony Martinez, and asked him what sets Cleveland apart from other cities and what EO hopes to achieve with a new space for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs can often feel alone. They can feel like they're on an island with nobody to turn to, right? And so entrepreneurs, other entrepreneurs, are the best source to be able to turn to and problem solve. EO Cleveland is a very unique chapter in that they have a high retention rate here. They're providing high member value. They wanted a place for their members to collaborate here in the city of Cleveland. So they came together with this idea to put together something called the Think Big Space, which is what we're commemorating today. That's why the mayor was here cutting a ribbon to commemorate and celebrate entrepreneurs in the city led by EO Cleveland. For TV20, this is Alex Picturna. Thank you, Alex. To learn more about EO Cleveland, you can visit eonetwork.work slash Cleveland. Hip hop enthusiasts and aspiring artists have gathered for a unique workshop aimed at nurturing talent and fostering creativity while celebrating 20 years of hip hop at the workshop at Cleveland State University. I'm feeling excellent, wonderful, because the hip-hop workshop started out in the humble streets of the legendary East Cleveland on Lee and Euclid. And to see us now as a part of the Department of Africana Studies at Cleveland State University, I'm feeling wonderful starting our 20th year. The workshop featured a diverse array of activities, including rap, DJing, and beatboxing sessions. Participants are not only learning from experienced mentors, but also collaborating with each other to create something truly special. 
And I'm definitely thankful to be able to celebrate it still here. It means that hip hop is not only universal, but in our region, it is loved. And at a place of higher learning, that's what hip hop does. It teaches. As you hear behind me, the DJ is teaching lessons. We have the legendary Johnny G who's about to speak. He was with, even received an award from Dean Rufus, Dean Dean of Club Style. So it's in the building. Johnny G spoke on the importance of hip hop and how it can open doors for the youth. I feel that it's great. I mean, uh, it gives these, it, it actually goes against a lot of things that folks think it goes against, but it doesn't. Uh, it gives our youngsters a chance to, you know, to get up out of the streets and do something positive with themselves. The goal is to provide a platform for the community to express themselves through hip hop. It's about empowerment, self-expression, and fostering creativity in a positive environment. A free family atmosphere where they not only learn, can participate with music, and also by it being family friendly, it means they can get certain things, it'll be radio edited, but they can enjoy themselves, enjoy hip hop, and leave learning something. It's clear that this hip hop workshop is not just about learning the art form, but also building a supportive and creative community. We look forward to seeing the incredible talent that will emerge from this event. Finally, the Esperanza Incorporated recently celebrated their 40th anniversary with their Fiesta of Hope Scholarship Gala. In Spanish, Esperanza means hope. And for thousands of Hispanic students across Northeast Ohio, that's exactly what has been provided to them. Gifting over $2 million worth of scholarships over the 40 years of their existence, Esperanza's Fiesta of Hope was no different, with $100,000 being awarded to 100 local Hispanic students including current Tri-C student Cassandra Rivas, who hopes her study of psychology will help improve generational trauma. So for me, Esperanza, um, it cultivates a space for me to grow edu through education. For me, education is power. And through education, I can not only excel for myself, but I can excel for my family and the whole Latino community. So for my major in psychology, I wanted to specifically dwell into families um, coming from Latin America or the Caribbean and talk about, understand how, how they accustom to the life here. It causes trauma and through their families and there's a ton of generational trauma passed through. And so I think it's important to address those issues. Well, TV20 is streaming live 24-7. Visit TV20Cleveland.com to use your live feed and so much more. Stay connected with TV20 wherever you go by liking and following us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly Twitter. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page to watch our numerous programs. Thank you for watching TV20 News. I'm Dan Monroe. Stay tuned for more on TV20. We are Cleveland.